Floss Tube. This is Donna, Doodlebug Stitcher, and I'm here today to talk about Stitch Mania, which starts tomorrow, May 1st. If you're not familiar, Stitch Mania was started in 2015 by a group of stitchers on Facebook. There's a large Facebook group there now. I've done a lot of research on this because this year is my first year, so I wasn't really familiar with the whole concept of what Stitch Mania was all about. Um, it was started um, to do 15 new starts, brand new projects, in the first 15 days of May. It's evolved because there's really no rules to this. You can do whatever you'd like. Um, it's mainly to focus on your stitching, um, which is great because we all love to stitch. So, um, as my first year, I decided that this year I was going to take the four works in progress that I'm already working on with other groups and stitch-alongs and incorporate that into additional new projects. So I have a total of 15 projects on my list and what I am doing is then combining them um, the new projects and the works in progress and then I'll work on those in total twice throughout the entire month of May. So that's my version of Stitch Mania. So what I'd like to do today is to show you what I'm going to be working on. So I hope you get some inspiration from them. Maybe you're not familiar with some of these projects and they might inspire you to work on them as well. So um, we should get started. So the first one tomorrow, I'm going to be working on my Main Street series from Country Cottage Needleworks. I'm complete all, I'm, I'm finished completely eight of the 10 buildings. I am currently working on the flower shop and I'm waiting for the dress shop pattern to come to me. It's currently in transit. My mail just came and it didn't come today. So um, I'll be working on finishing the flower shop and working on my borders, but these are the charts. They're, they're all cute. They're available through your local needle workshops. Um, Country Cottage Needleworks on the uh, internet has the pictures of the entire series. Um, I'm stitching them all as one piece rather than um, individually. And I can show you what my large piece looks like. Um, eventually it'll be um, finished and hung in my hallway that leads to our bedrooms. Um, but that is my project. I did my own modified border between the two rows and I haven't decided if I'm gonna do an edge border or not. I've been Googling and Pinterest uh, picture saving um, different ideas that I want to do. So, um, but I'll be working on that. Hopefully that'll get finished this year to be hung up in the hallway. Um, on Wednesday the 2nd, um, I'm going to be working on Lizzie Kate's A Little Bee Kit. Um, and it comes with the fabric and the embellishments and then all you have to do is add your floss and I'm doing it in DMC floss. Everything is all already in there. So I'll be doing that. That's Lizzie Kate, a little bit. Lizzie Kate's now um, closed shop. They're retired. So if you, you know, want this pattern or, you know, want to try and find this kit, um, definitely do some searching with local shops. Um, from my understanding, I think that the distributors still have access. If they like ordered a lot of extra stock to have on hand, then distributors can, local needle workshops can get it still from the distributors. But um, as far as getting it directly from Lizzie Kate, sorry, um, I'm on the hunt for patterns as well. So I'm in the same boat as a lot of you. Um, on Thursday, I'll be working, um, it's a two-part project for me because I picked two of the Twisted Sister um, tiny um, charts, they're itty bitties, um, and I'm doing these tandem um, because these will be finished um, with each other. I haven't quite determined, I know that they're going to be finished together, um, but I haven't decided yet exactly. I'm looking for the right piece. Um, but this is Itty Bitty Honey, which is really cute. I have a thing for bees. And then this is Itty Bitty. So I'm doing that. And I um, changed up, I'm doing that on this fabric, which was tea dyed linen. I tea dyed it myself. I'm starting to do that as well. 
So if you're interested in fabric, let me know. I'll be happy to dye it for you. Um, and I changed the, the threads a little bit. I'm using some over dyed and some DMC. So um, I decided to kind of make that unique uh, for myself. Um, on Friday, Friday's a little hectic for me. We have a lot going on. My mom is having knee replacement surgery, so I'll be at the hospital all day. So I wanted an easy project. It is May the 4th, and if you're a Star Wars fan, you know what that means. Um, so I had my husband pick this out. He is a super huge Star Wars fan. This is a pattern I bought on Etsy, and it was a PDF download. Um, so this is the force rules um, and so I'll be this is super easy it's just one color of thread black how hard is that um, and I just picked a um, white linen and I think I have this it's marked I think somewhere this is Belfast 32 count white linen so I'll be stitching that. Um, I have no idea where it's going to go or how it's going to be finished. Um, and if you're interested in a pattern like this, I was able to get it on Etsy shop Stitch Line, S-T-I-T-C-H-L-I-N-E, Stitch Line, on Etsy. Um, she's got a lot of cute Star Wars. So we're big into Darth Vader in this house, my husband's favorite character. So, um, he liked this, um, so that'll be stitching for him on May the 4th, um, for my husband. Um, Saturday, May the 5th, um, I'm going to be going, doing another, um, group of Twisted Threads charts. Um, this is Americana, so this kind of goes in line with the, um, patriotic, uh, hashtag from Priscilla and Chelsea and I, I apologize I can't remember what that is now but it's like um, uh, 4th of July Saturday stitch along or something like that anyway or stars and stripes st stitch along stars and stripes Saturday there you go it just took me a minute so stars and stripes Saturday is the hashtag I believe and I'm gonna be doing the oh, itty bitty glory which is right there and itty bitty Americana, which is right there. So those will be stitched in tandem together. And then I have this really pretty blue linen. And this is just a scrap. Like um, when I have bigger pieces and I end up cutting them down for what, once the piece is finished, I end up having smaller scraps and I tend to save them to use for these small like itty bitty charts. Um, so, I try not to throw that stuff away until I know that I, you know, unless it's a tiny little piece and I know I'm never going to um, get it finished um, on something that small. Um, then on Sunday, um, which is um, Santa Sunday hashtag, um, I am going to be working on the Little House Needer Arts Farmhouse Christmas series. And I started this, I'm doing the Facebook stitch along as well with this. I am, I'll show this to you because I've, out of, I typically do charts or do my stitching the way it's charted. I very rarely change up threads. Um, I try to get a piece that is, the fabric to be a similar color. But this one, I decided I was really going to go against the norm and I really went all out. I, change the fabric I change the um, the way that the series is going to be done because I'm doing it all as one and there's nine pieces to the series but I knew that once I had my fabric and I did my board the border that I decided to do I only had eight squares so I'm doing eight not nine um, I also did a border that I borrowed from another Facebook group member, Eileen Sutterfield. Hey, Eileen! Um, I wanted to give her proper credit because when she showed pictures of her border, I fell in love with it. And I messaged her privately and I was like, Eileen, do you, would you mind at all if I, you know, 
borrowed or copied this and she was like absolutely so I feel like um, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery so I I'm so enamored by your creativity Eileen and so I credit you with all with this border um, I started to stitch the first square and I was almost finished and I realized I wasn't happy with the way that it was placed within the square so I ripped it all out and I'm restitching it now so I'm a little slow on this project I'm also adapting a lot of the thread I changed almost all of the threads I've added wool because um, the animals uh, like the sheep um, are being stitched with wool threads so um, but this is um, how far I've gotten on the little barn and you can see the sheep down in the corner and I'm kind of adapting the patterns as I go I've changed the trees um, I've, I'm adding like fences and different things and other animals so this is going to be a long work in progress but you can see that border that she designed it's so so pretty so pretty so that is farmhouse christmas i have the patterns for the barn and grandpa's pickup truck and i still have the dairy uh the current one that just came out which is the uh i think it's called dairy darling with the cow um so i have those to work on thank god they only come out once a month because I'm hoping that this is finished enough with enough time to get it done and finished for Christmas. Um, then the following day, which is the 7th, um, I'll be working on seasonal strings from Lizzie Kate. So what I did is I found a large piece of fabric that I really love the color of. And it's even weave. And I can't remember what... I'm sorry I can't remember what the color name is but it's it's very pretty um, it's very neutral so I knew it could work with regardless of season that it could work with and the piece, the piece of fabric that I had was big enough that I could stitch all four seasons on one piece of fabric and still accommodate for the extra material for finishing so I started this early in the month of April and so I've done in April the spring string for spring and then I did the buzzy string for summer and now I'm getting ready to start the thankful string from Lizzie Kate and then I will do the Mary string and then if I still am able to or can find a similar piece of fabric I may do the snowy string as well so that I have the four seasons plus Christmas I haven't decided if I'm gonna do snowy string or not it's, I'm on the fence about it because I want the Chris I kind of want the Christmas one more but I know if I do the snowy one then it can hang up longer so it's I'm trying to justify. I may end up doing the the uh, Mary string, the Christmas one, on a different fabric, and that way it goes more with my Christmas decorations. I decorate I decorate um, the main part, my living room, and the main part of the house in kind of a farmhouse um, buffalo check woodland theme. Um, so I've got like lots of things like. Um, cardinals and pine cones and tin and buffalo check and lanterns and things like that my whole tree was themed like that this year and it was beautiful and I had this big wooden uh, Christmas sign that says I'm dreaming of a farmhouse Christmas um, and it's got the red truck and the buffalo check and everything so um, I really love that kind of uh, aesthetic for Christmas decorations so I'm still deciding but getting back um, this is the spring string that was finished and this is the Lizzie Kate it's really really cute and it's just so fast I think I was able to finish half of it in an evening like maybe three hours worth of stitching and I was like all but done two letters 
And then that's the summer string. There we go. And again, I did these exactly as charted. Um, I don't think I changed up any of the colors on these. Um, and then I'll be doing the thankful and the um, thankful and the merry and or the um, snowy. So these call for week dye works. Um, I typically do these in the um, the fancy threads. So um, that is coming up. Oh, here we go. The fabric on that one was Country Mocha, um, 36 count Country Mocha. So I had it after all. Um, next up after that is Babushka's Bees by Plum Street Samplers. This is one that um, came out at market this year and I drooled over it until the shops came home from market and then I snatched it up and I'll be doing that and all the um, fancy threads. I already have those here and I just have to um, sort them all out and package them up in their, um, their Ziploc bags. So that's exciting. And I'll be uh, stitching it 32 count um, uh, Wilchit. I always pronounce that wrong. Wichelt, Wilchit. Anyway, Country Fresh Cafe Mocha um, from my stash. So that is start on the 8th. On the 9th, I'm doing, um, I'm doing a couple of bent creeks. Um, three, two big ones, one little. So this is the first of the three. So this is Bent Creek Summer Row. And let's see that. No, closer there. So I'll be stitching that. Again, those long, those long type of samplers that are long and short, um, they really stitch up fast. Um, I had a leftover piece from another project of 28 count lamb's wool and it was just the exact dimensions that I needed. So you can see my pins are there marking my center. I, te I tend to be, I learned how to stitch from the center out. So that's what I typically do. Every once in a while I'll do a project from the top left or bottom left corner but it depends on the project and what's all involved but when you have something like this I try to make sure that it's centered in the fabric so I'll be doing that one uh, next is um, this is the stitch along that Priscilla and Chelsea are doing and I finally got my pattern today along with all but one of my thre my uh, fancy threads so I push this back later in the um, schedule so that I can make sure I have my thread, that additional thread in time. Because of course it's the color that I need the most uh, of. Um, and that is Country Cottage Needleworks Bless Our Home. So I'm excited to start this. This is going to be my first stitch along with Priscilla and Chelsea. And I am using Priscilla's um, conversion for the threads. I want to check them, um, lay them all out, and see if I want to make any substitutions at the last minute. Um, and I don't know yet if I'm going to change the colors of the flowers. I know Priscilla did. Priscilla and Chelsea did yellow. Um, yellow is pretty. It's not my favorite. I, they're going to hate me for saying this, but um, my favorite color is purple, and I know they both hate it. But um, I don't know if purple works. For how I want to display this so I think I might um, just do the the truer red and maybe throw some yellow in here and there um, but I have to look at my flosses and see what I want to do because honestly I don't want to have to buy another skein of floss if I don't need to for this project um, and I'm going to be stitching that on um, R&R's um, Creek Bread Creek Bed Brown. I can't talk today for some reason. Um, and that's on 30 count fabric. So I have that. It's a really dark color. So I think the, the um, threads will pop on that. Then I'm going to be doing um, Bent Creek's Blessings Abound. Um, and that's a little one. Um, stitch count on that is 41 by 120. Um, and it's very cute. I 
did that um, that is one of my autumn projects so I figured that'll be a quick stitch this one I decided to do the DMC on because I um, didn't have any of the gentle arts I only had actually I only had one of the gentle arts that it called for um, and then when I looked at the DMC conversion for it I liked those colors and it was so easy to get those because you know Joanne's had the the sale um, so I just said that one will be DMC um, and that is being stitched on a, um, a remnant piece of R&R's black sand 35 count I love finding these in needle workshops um, I've collected them over the years and so this piece was three dollars and it's twelve and a half by eight so with what I need for finishing this was the perfect size for three bucks I mean three bucks for a piece of fabric and it's perfect so um, I tend to try to look for those types of um, pieces especially when, if I'm traveling or I go to a shop that I've never been to I try to like look, really look through their fabrics um, there are certain fabrics that I just love to stitch on certain colors and I so I own lots of pieces in those colors um, perfect example is the next one which is also Bent Creek this is um, flag 1998 I've owned this chart since around 1998 um, and I've never stitched it and I thought it was perfect it's perfect for 4th of July patriotic and that kind of stuff I want to have ready and out so that I can start decorating as early as Memorial Day and keep that all up all during the month of June. And then once July 4th happens, then that'll come down and then my other summer items, which are like my bees and my beachy stuff, will come out and that'll stay up until September. Um, so that I'm going to be doing on this remnant of lamb's wool that I had in my stash and it was the perfect size and it's 32 count on the 13th um, which is a Sunday um, I'm doing a new start this is on the recipe for a snowman by Pine Mountain Design this was stitched up as a model on the wall at my local needle workshop and I absolutely fell in love with it. They were out of the chart so they ordered the chart for me and I am doing it on the shown fabric which is the Petty Point um, polka dot um, natural and linen. I adore this fabric. I need like a bolt of it I think if they would sell me a bolt. Um, so that I'll be doing on Sunday for um, Santa Sunday. Um, then I'm going to be stitching, I have two more left. Um, then I'm gonna be stitching on the 14th. Um, this is a rotation back um, into a project I'm already working on. Um, and this is a very old chart. Um, I, it was published, I don't even know when it was published, let me see. The copyright is 1986, so that tells you how old the chart is. Uh, this is by Cinnamon Heart Needleworks, and they, I don't know, I'm not sure if they're still in business or not. They were from Lafayette, New Jersey, so I'm going to have to do some research and see if they're still in effect. But I'll let you see that really close. And... I was amazed on how quickly this stitched up. I've only stitched on it two times um, for a week period, so approximately two weeks. And this is how much I've gotten done on it. So I've gotten on the top row, two trees done, all of the alphabet letters, two trees underneath of it. And then the first row of buildings is completely done. And then all I'll have left to add to that on the bottom is another set of buildings and then it doesn't call for a border but I'm trying to figure out um, a cute border to put around it um, and then that will get framed to hang in the living room I'm not really sure where yet but uh, either um, somewhere it'll hang 
And then my last project is another Plum Street Samplers. I have Priscilla and Chelsea to thank for this because I had not really paid attention to this designer before I started watching their YouTube and then I just completely, oh it's upside down, it's upside down, there we go. And so that's Harvest Keepers, so that's keeping with my bee obsession. So now I have Babushka's Bees and I have Harvest Keepers. I really want them um, to design a, because this is fall, and I think Babushka's Bees is more spring. I'd like to see them do a summer bee and then a winter bee. Um, I think that would be really cute to have the designs to be able to swap them out seasonally. And I have all the, the um, fancy threads for that. And that will be stitched on flax fields um, uh, between um, lamb's wool and flax fields. Those are my two favorite neutrals to stitch on. Um, I've just recently gotten into dyeing my own tea dye, coffee dye fabric thanks to Chelsea and Priscilla. Um, their tutorial was very helpful and I was able to um, do some linen um, and I've kind of gotten some ideas for some other dyeing projects. Um, so that's going to be a fun, a fun hobby to get into. Um, as far as additional um, I have everything ready um, it just has to be organized I pulled everything out to show you today and then I have to put it all back and make sure that all the flosses are in the right bags and then if anything new comes out I don't know if I'll figure out how to add that in somewhere or just um, put a hold on a temporary hold on it until June um, my basic concentration for the next couple of months is I want to get summer and patriotic um, items stitched and finished very quickly um, and then I want to start working on fall. We don't really celebrate Halloween. I mean we do but we don't. I don't decorate a lot with Halloween. My husband, um, my husband doesn't celebrate Halloween. Um, but because of my daughter, you know, we do do trick-or-treating, so we don't do things, you know, we don't do lots of witches or anything, um, anything like scary or demonic or anything like that. Uh, so I try to do a lot of my Halloween stuff with pumpkins rather than like goblins and, and bats and things like that. So um, it's very difficult for me to find cross-stitch designs. I have so many, and I, 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 there's so many that I love, but I, you know, I, do, I don't stitch them, and I've made the conscious decision not to put that stuff out because of his view, and, and a lot of people would probably um, disagree with me on that, but that's just, that's us, and that's what works for us, so we're just going with it. And so I'm trying to find designs that I can put out and keep out during October and into November and that way the stuff will be able to stay up through Thanksgiving. I usually decorate for Christmas right on Thanksgiving weekend to get everything out and that way I have at least a whole month to enjoy it because my Christmas won't come down until the first week of January. So that's my goal is to work on projects that I can make sure get out um, and are finished and can be displayed um, not just for everybody else to enjoy but for me to enjoy because you know my stitching is something that I want to um, take pride in and, and love and I want other people to enjoy it as well so that is my stitch mania I will most likely post again in about a week and show you the progress I've made so far on those and then going forward my goal is to do things like hauls and works in progress and finishes kind of like um, what other floss tubers do 
um, but I don't want to, you know, bombard you. So that might be every week to two weeks. I'm not really sure. I'm going to kind of play it by ear. Um, thank you so much to the people who have subscribed to my channel in the last 24 hours. My channel is currently uh, about 24 hours old. I just uh, posted my first video on Sunday. Today's Monday. Um, I have had so many nice comments and messages and um, people from Facebook and other social media have, have really been sweet and you know I might by no means am a professional at this. I am totally still learning everything. Um, I don't try to be uh, better than anybody else. I figure you know we're all in this together and we all bring our uniqueness to floss tube and to um, the world of stitching and the best I can do is do what works for me. So um, I hope that you enjoy the video. I hope that you may have found something from what I'll be stitching on this Stitch Mania to maybe do in the future. Um, I hope that um, if you like the video, please like it. This way, see, I'm still learning. Please like the video, um, post comments. Um, I think after a few more of these, I may start to do um, a giveaway or two um, to, you know, if there's interest. Um, but for this first time, uh, what I'd like to know, and you can put it in the comments below, um, is what is your favorite finished project that you've stitched um, and why is it your favorite? So um, comment that below, and even though I said I might be giving it, doing a giveaway in a few weeks, um, I might pick someone next week to win something um, from those comments. So um, again, like the video, comment. If uh, you have any questions, feel free to, to message me. Um, also, check out my Instagram and you can friend me on Facebook. Um, those links will be below as well. Um, I hope you have a wonderful time stitching for Stitch Mania this year. And I'll see you back next week to show you how far I've made it. So take care everybody. Have a happy Monday and have a great Stitch Mania. Take care. Bye.